Glaucoma is one of the leading causes of blindness, and currently there is no cure. Young and old, all of us are at risk. Ophthalmologist Laura Howard will explain what you need to know about glaucoma. Thanks for coming, Laura. Thank you for having me, Larry. So, Laura, as people have different concepts of glaucoma, exactly what does glaucoma mean? Glaucoma is a, a diverse number of diseases that all have a common factor where there's damage at the level of the optic nerve, and that's leading to some vision loss for the patient. So you have the model here. Why don't you show me the different structures and where the optic nerve is? So the optic nerve is actually inside the eye at the level of the retina. The optic nerve will come in through the back of the eye, and then we usually see it as a yellow disc as it comes to the retina. This is where damage occurs. However, the pressure of the eye is produced from fluid that is being made right behind the iris. The fluid needs to travel through the pupil to the drainage outlet, which is where the iris and the cornea meet on the inside of the eye. The coloring of the eye has nothing to do with this, right? It, 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 no, iris color uh, does not affect glaucoma. Doesn't affect glaucoma. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, people say, oh, I have high eye pressure and I have glaucoma. That's not necessarily the case. And some people can have like normal pressure in glaucoma? Yes, there are a subset of patients that have normal pressure within our expected range of 10 to 21 uh, pressure that still show damage occurring at their optic nerve and vision loss. Now, are there certain people who are predisposed to glaucoma, like people with dry eyes or people who have parents have it? or Yes, um, we do know that there are genetics involved with getting glaucoma. So if you have a first degree relative, like your mother or father mm -hmm. or a brother or sister who have glaucoma, then your risk is, is increased. There are some other eye conditions, such as being very nearsighted, which we call myopia, that has been linked to glaucoma, um, as well as there's a small association with having diabetes and having glaucoma. So do you think everybody should be checked for glaucoma at, or their eye pressure is checked at every exam, even a, even a child? Yes, yes, most eye exams will include an eye pressure check. At an optometry office, it's very common to have that puff of air okay. to check your pressure. At an ophthalmology office, we use a slightly more accurate measurement where a blue light will actually come up and touch the cornea to measure the pressure, but it should be a part of all annual checkups when you go to your eye doctor. So you recommend, even if you have normal you don't have glaucoma, you have normal pressure, you should be checked every year? If you're not going to an eye doctor regularly because your vision is good, mm -hmm. probably one exam in your 20s, one exam in your 30s, maybe once in your 40s. I see. But those who have eye conditions, such as being nearsighted, and they're going to see their optometrist every year to two years, that should be part of the exam to have their eye pressure checked. What about LASIK surgery? Does that affect the eye pressure? Interestingly, people that have had LASIK will often have a lower reading of their eye pressure due to the fact that the laser has removed some corneal tissue. When the tissue is thinner, the amount of pressure exerted to measure the intraocular pressure is lowered. So if you have laser, you may have a normal or low eye pressure, but may actually have a higher intraocular pressure than average because of the way we test and measure the eye pressure. So it's a, it's a measurement error rather than a true change. Mm -hmm. Okay, a patient comes to you and you look and they have no symptoms. They can still have no symptoms, right? And still have glaucoma, is that right? Yes, uh, when you're getting an eye exam, it's very important that the doctor should actually look at the optic nerve because it's that structure of the optic nerve that tips us off if there is a functional damage. We often want to catch glaucoma before there's any true vision loss that the patient's aware of. We're trying to catch it in its most okay. early stage to prevent any further loss. If you do get visual changes from glaucoma, what is it like a haziness or is it loss of night vision or what, what, is, what is, how would they describe it usually? Well, very late in the course of the disease, people will complain of blurriness or loss of side vision. Early in the course of the disease, it is such a slow process that most people adapt and since we're using both eyes open together, our brain will fill in the missing portion and in most cases, people are unaware that damage is occurring until very late in the course of the disease. Okay, so now you, somebody comes to you and they, you, you see the damage to the nerve. What, is, what do you do next? Do you put them on medications? Do you do a laser? Do, what, do, what do you do for that initially? Most commonly in the United States, we try an eye drop first mm -hmm. to lower the intraocular pressure. The eye drops are convenient, usually well tolerated. There are many types that can be used just once a day. If eye drops fail, 
usually the next step is to use a laser procedure to help lower the ocular pressure. If they have glaucoma, but they have normal pressure inside, how do you know the eye drops are working if you're not measuring pressure? What, what do you measure then? Well, we still are looking to lower the pressure with the eye drops. We just don't get as large of a percentage effect. So then we start looking at progression of the way the optic nerve looks. Is it getting thin? Is there loss of tissue? And we have some great tests, uh, computers, that will scan the optic nerve and give us actual numeric values of how thick the retinal nerve fiber layer is as it comes in to make up the cable that is the optic nerve. We also have patients do the visual field test where they press a button when they subjectively see mm -hmm. lights go off in their side vision. That is a gold standard for detecting vision loss due to glaucoma. So pressure is part of the deal, but you have these other more precise measurements mm -hmm. of the nerve function. Yes. I mean, I'm a, half of my patients who come to my office have glaucoma. A lot of them complain of irritation from the medications. You mentioned the laser. Is that a, a good substitute for medications? Yes. If someone is intolerant to the medications mm -hmm. due to the excessive redness or irritation caused by the medication, laser is an option for them. Thankfully, the companies that make these eye drops are starting to recognize that the preservative that's involved in the eye drop may be causing the irritation and there are preservative free options now available. Those are the one use ones where you take them and yes. you know, throw them away and but they cost ten away. times more. Those, those <laughs> they are the do ones. have cost, to, yeah. sometimes they're cost prohibitive. And is the laser pretty effective? Yes, the laser, uh, selective laser trabeculoplasty, which is the most common laser used nowadays for open angle glaucoma, works about as well as an eye drop, usually lowering the pressure about 25%. The effect of the laser will wane or stop working after about five to seven years. It, it can be repeated mm -hmm. at that time frame to achieve the pressure lowering effect again. So the laser, uh, is there a downside to it? Is it painful? Can you lose your vision? Anything like that? There is a small risk of having a pressure spike where the pressure will go very high within a few hours after the laser. Most doctor's offices will have you come back in one or two hours after the laser procedure is done to recheck the pressure. If the pressure should spike directly after the laser treatment, mm -hmm. then you're going to be using eye drops to lower the pressure until the inflammation starts to settle down from the inside of the eye. So that, that sounds like a great alternative which I would probably choose because I hate drops. Yeah. What about the, uh, the stent? There is a, such a thing as a stent, right? Mm -hmm. for a stent um, bypasses the angle where the fluid needs to drain out, allowing fluid to flow more freely out of the eye. That surgery of placing a stent is often done in conjunction with removing a cataract. Oh, I see. So often the patient will have a visually significant cataract and will be going into surgery anyways. Okay, we're just about out of time, but so I guess the, the message is what, that you can have glaucoma, live a nice life and keep mm -hmm. your vision, is that right? Yes, often glaucoma has no symptoms until very late in the course of the disease. And once you have vision loss from glaucoma, we don't get it back. So it's very important to get your eye pressure checked and have a doctor look at the optic nerve during the exam. Great, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you.